what is a candidate key? More importantly, what do we mean by a key? One of the things to know is that each one of these fields is what is better known as a data element. And the question becomes when we look for a key is which one of them, if any, or how many of them, uniquely are identified. Now what that means is that no other order could have the same value. In other words, is it possible to have a customer address that no other order could ever have? Well, a customer could have many orders, so that wouldn't be true. What uniquely defines it? Perhaps the most popular key of all time is social security number, very often used to identify employees and individuals because we know that no two employees can have the same social security number. The reason we call it a key is because it becomes the key to that record, the key to finding that person, because we know that no other element can contain the same two values. In looking at this form, and for the most part what I will give you today as part of this discussion, is really that order number would be a candidate. Order number meaning that no other order could have the same value. So it becomes what we would call a candidate key. Now, unfortunately, in many cases, there can be more than one candidate. And a candidate is very often what we see in politics where we have two people running for an office. And what do we know? One is a winner and one is a loser. And what we'll see today is that that winner, the winner will become what we will call the primary key. All right. So we have candidate keys which lead us to primary keys. And a primary key is the default order of the database itself and it will become the element that will be used to find records, a very important issue. Now let me give you an example where there can be more than one candidate. Many, many companies have in their employee databases two data elements that are unique. They have what is called an employee ID, which they set themselves, and they have the social security number. Well, in this case, I have two candidates. The selection of the winner usually is formatted on the basis or determined on the basis of which one is used more often to find employees. So if you, in effect, were going to use social security number more often to select that person, then you would use social security number. If it was the employee ID, you would use that. The fact is that it's going to provide the system with quicker access so it becomes the default mechanism. The primary key plays another role though. It is also used as a vehicle to link one system or one database to another. So establishing the appropriate primary key is very important. The next piece about the primary key is that the others become, so for example, if the social security number became the primary key notated by PK, the employee number would become what is called an alternate key or a secondary key. However, it's important to note that alternate keys and secondary keys are never used in the logical model. They are very much part of the physical database where we can alternately, and which is why they call it an alternate key, can be utilized to find a record. So if we went through a role play of a physical event, if I were to call up my employer and ask them to find information about my benefits and they asked me my social security number and I didn't know it, but I knew my employee ID, they could still find my record. But that very much would be a slower query because we didn't utilize the primary key. The last key, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is called a foreign key. And what we mean by a foreign key is the following. If we were to define the relationship between one database and another, what must always be true is that there must be one common data element between them to form a relationship. Typically, in the relational model, as you will see today, 
that duplicate element is between primary keys. They point to each other. They have a linkage. And that's what creates the relationship itself. In some cases, as we will also see in our lecture today, there is relationships that we want to form between two tables where we do not have that natural link. And thus, we must create one. And we will call that a foreign key, as I will demonstrate to you in a little while. So if we were to move on in our example, we would have established steps one and two. We understand that order number is the only candidate in this example, and that it thus becomes the primary key.